Apart from the streets of Philadelphia, I haven't really seen many zombie simulators, and to my surprise, I dug up one from my memory. Stops the zombie. It has everything it takes to have fun. Zombies, retro futurism, absurdity, a brain dead story, and more zombies. It kicks off in the 50s in a city punch bowl, industrialized by a Nazi scientist, Dr. Herman Y, who works for good guys now. The scientist's intelligence, along with the wealth of the city mayor Andrew Monday, led to the prosperity of the city, while Andrew's mom Maggie is establishing new connections for her son. In this place, nobody can say the grass is always greener on the other side, because it's equally green everywhere, thanks to Dr. Y's fertilizer that keeps it in perfect shape. Sadly, we can't say the same about Stubbs, the poor fella who was risen from the dead by the same chemicals. After decomposing for 20 years in the ground, the first thing you definitely want is to eat. Thanks to this lovely robot lady, she shows us one of the local dining establishments. I'm too young to die. That is just sick! And free. If you think I showed 90% of this zombie simulator, you'd be wrong. It's about 80. But what really shines and makes it exciting is the way how you reach your dinner. Here is one example. Sometimes after sleeping for two decades, you have gases in your stomach. And well, you have to release it one way or another. Don't worry, just let it go. Sadly, the policeman won't like it. But hey, look, who cares if they will work for you after a few minutes, right? Except for one brain cell, we share another similarity. We are fond of brains, which makes us a a brilliant army that has a common goal. The robot lady starts a tour for us to show the city. Let this be a dream! The smell of brains leads stops to the monorail station, where he sees a poster of Maggie Monday, who invites everybody to look at the new fertilizer. Except for brains, Stubbs has one more purpose in life, which is to find Maggie and show her brain some zombie love. Maggie is not an easy target, she is surrounded by men day and night. I'm just doing my job, Miss Monday. Andrew asked me to look after you, and I'm going to make sure uh, nothing unseemly happens on this uh, wonderful... Uh, Sunny. Fabulous. Sunny. Huge. Eyes up here. Her guard takes her away and I disappointed jump in a fertilizer car to throw some fertilizer on a fan. Fertilizer works hands down great. Look how many greens it cultivated. The guide bot lady shows some courtesy and explains to me how to make my guts a biological weapon. Neither my jokes nor this game has proper transitions, so Stubbs gets inside the restroom. Since there are more and more brain dead cops, they will never catch me at that rate. I'll make their life simpler and pay a visit to the police station myself. I recruit a few suspects to my army. and that's when high ranks investigators are trying to stop me. Since they are sturdier, it takes more time to stun them. But it works both ways. Turning them into zombies creates body bulletproof shields. Look at that handsome. Oh Looking at the mirrors, I realize that it's the city of the far future. And the game is ahead of its time, because it has reflections. Yes, Hogwarts Legacy and other new games, I'm speaking about it. Magic can create reflections. Nobody can anymore. Turning everybody into zombies doesn't help me much, because riot cops bring stops in for studies anyway. They deliver him to the lab, where scientists are preparing for proving to their moms their knowledge is not completely useless, and they haven't wasted 80 years studying in university for nothing. I'm afraid they have. As they can't even remember where they put the chainsaw for educational purposes. On one hand, I'm in danger because the police captain calls and threats me with Dr. Y, who is on his way to the police station. On the other hand, uh, I have a hand. So Stubbs rips it off and sends it flying. First, you might think, why am I watching this video? But the second thought is, so what? What would I potentially get from a remote control hand? You can control people with that, but scientists are useless and weak. No matter how smart they are, they can't outsmart the bullet. Especially when it only takes two to take them down. So my object must be sturdier and someone nobody cares about. Pity there is no Steven Seagal in there. I will look somewhere else. I take control of a convict and grant him a second chance for freedom. I take down cops and open the lab to free myself. As promised, I grant him freedom from being bent over again. The riot forces are trying to stop me again, but it's not a cutscene anymore, so it's impossible. They give me hard times though, because helmets block access to their brains, therefore my remote control hand is useless. A good old fist fight is the only way to stun them, then rip a hand off and use it as a club. I know it sounds strange while playing as a zombie, but I have to act smart and stay away from being so surrounded by these guys, as just a few punches will be enough to send me back to the grave. Okay, okay, I'm dying. The jailbreak went smoothly, and I head to the captain's office. If you expected another massacre where I win, you'd be terribly wrong. Mr. Seven.
that's the massacre of my body and soul because of two things. You have to keep in mind the moves and hit them along to the beat. And second, it reminds me of my prom where I danced worse than a footless zombie and it gives me shivers every time I think of it. I wish I could show you the full dance battle but I'll be demonetized because of the music here. And I swear, not only is the music a banger, but the idea itself. Yet I can't believe they didn't add Michael Jackson's thriller. The whole game has its kind of vibes. If this hasn't convinced you to try this game, then I don't know what else will. Maybe it's that you can play this game together with your friend? One brain dead zombie and one brain dead friend give one regular co-player. The captain steps into Stubb's intestines and dances his way to the armory, which means we'll see fireworks. <laughs> Fast. Relax, baby. Ted would have wanted it this way. I watched him die. Yeah, like three hours ago. Don't live in the past, Judy. It's time to move on. <laughs> Fred, oh. 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 I carry on my zombie crusade in the city. This time locals armed up with bats and bare fists. Crowds of forces make me lose my head. Literally. I can play bowling with my head now, which gives me quite an opportunity because it's my only weapon of mass destruction that can reach faraway targets and deal a lot of damage. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. You got a dream, you gotta protect it. He didn't make it. Since more and more districts are under my control, redneck militiamen come to the streets to protect their country music and inbred families. Two militiamen enter the warehouse where Stubbs is taking a smoke break. Those two are an introduction to what is waiting for me. Can't say they're bosses, but are presented like ones. When they're done, there is a plaza waiting for me, and I must say it's the hell plaza. You don't want to engage in close combat, because they have shotguns, so you have to act smart. For instance, using a hand to take control of a sniper. It makes everything easier but the second problem turns up when backup shows up behind the back and kills me there. Therefore I have to pick the right place to hide. So after many tries I realized I can lure them behind these columns while staying relatively safe. Why are we still here? Before the second group shows up, I stand behind them because they are scripted and harmless throughout the cutscene. When the cutscene ends, I have to fart as much as I can so other districts can hear it and just bite them one by one. That's the strategy that worked out for me. Rednecks are guarding the shopping mall because they found the last beautiful girls who yet share different bloodlines in the city. In the context of the game, they protect these girls by any means possible, but the strongest weapon they have kept until the worst is this chainsaw guy, Cletus. Even though he has a passive ability to play country music directly into my brain, he is almost immortal too. He keeps fighting even without a hand, which made me wonder whether my game soft lock. It almost drove me nuts because he's impossible to kill and this irritating music kept playing again and again. After about 20 minutes of running around and ready to deafen myself, I found a way to parry his attacks. I prevailed after all, but my psyche has been permanently damaged. Resident Evil 4 made me piss my pants every time I hear a chainsaw sound. This game topped up my list of and now country music makes me shed my pants. Full house. Stubbs goes outside to keep on his crusade. The leader of the rednecks is running away and for a reason, Stubbs is obsessed with catching this guy. He gets run over by the car as Otis thinks the zombie is dead. Instead, Stubbs gets a free ride to Otis's farm. In other words, Stubbs is going on a brain detox trip. At the farm, Otis runs away to warn his men. A group of them is moving towards me. I can't stand their bullets for long, so I hide in the cornfield like in the best horror films. I take them down one by one. Like me, they don't use their brains or eyes and when I hide in the corn, I turn invisible to them. Later when they turn, they don't even need a head to do zombie stuff. But turning them can play against you. They're so stupid, they are not following your commands. They don't follow anything. Around the corner I hear a familiar noise, chainsaw guys. I'm not going to step in a close combat. I need something better to take them down. The tractor. When I take hold of the tractor, I can't help but enjoy every second of this wild ride. It's still great that they added a lot of variety throughout the game. Almost every new location is a brand new challenge. We had seen Max Payne's gameplay, now it's Carmageddon. I can't remember any game where we would do the same stuff, playing as a zombie with so many different mechanics. My ride finished at Otis's house. 
I don't dare to step inside. Instead, I take them down in a hitman style. Just look at that. Later, when I'm sure I cut down the population of these guys, I step inside. In the house, I hear intense, ominous music. But I'm not afraid of the suspense, but the quality of the music itself. <laughs> You remember those farmers have shotguns and chainsaws, right? That's their time to shine. They camp around corners or are trying to hide behind objects if I approach them close enough. But that's just the beginning. There are those chainsaw guys, and in close space it's incredibly difficult to dodge their swings. First of all, he looks like Trump, and second, he chases me like hell. After a little bit of running around, I finally get him. Otis is hiding in his bunker. He's holding a stick of dynamite while standing near piled explosive barrels. He's ready to take them both to the grave. He's saying some nonsense mixed up with prayers, but when he comes closer to take a look, it strikes him like lightning. His scene stops before. He starts to panic, so Stubbs takes a cigarette to have a smoke and tosses a match to dynamite. Son of a bitch! Before the house blows up, Stubbs hides behind the ship and, unlike Otis, successfully survives the explosion. Stubbs pushes the envelope and comes up with a brilliant idea. You have five seconds to guess how to turn everybody into zombies in a matter of a day. You are right, through the city water. He mounts a ship and rides to the dam. The ship is too exhausted to run further and the next second drops dead. After a long ride, Stubbs feels the urge to take a leak, but as a polite gentleman, he can't do it outside, so he starts looking for a restroom for zombies. Stubbs is trying to ask around and find a restroom, but the scientist is busy to show the way, but gives a hint to have a wee into the water supply basin. Great idea! Running through the halls, I understand why these cloud-addicted junkies are doing their crap. You you don't have to be afraid of zombies anymore if you had killed your brain. Local scientists are armed with pulse and laser guns. They make it complicated to reach them because their weapons push you back. After all, I reached the water supply. Have you ever wondered how Mountain Dew is made? Here we go. Cops and scientists all together are trying to stop me, and they almost make it because Stubbs has a humongous bladder and has collected hundreds of liters throughout 20 years. I mean, I have to pee for about 10 minutes before the water is contaminated enough. Unfortunately, you can't can't pee and infect people around. I don't understand why they didn't make it a fifth ability. Or is it just me who is ready to fall so low? When the contamination level is at 100%, I can finally leave, but I can feel Stubbs ears after relieving himself. However, that's only half of the job. I have to destroy the dam first, before I go back to the city, to show Maggie some zombie love. Crossing the dam is the second half of the job, because next I need to infiltrate a command room, overcharge power stations and bring down the dam wall. I can do so with my loyal zombie scientists. They are smart enough to do the job themselves without me taking part. I'm crazy about this attention to details that different types of zombies are capable of different activities. Or none. Being a taxi driver delivering subordinates to the spots seem kinda simple at first, until the barbershop quartet joins the fight. Some of these guys have jetpacks, and if you wasted all your disposable organs, consider yourself dead twice, as you won't be able to hurt them by any means. But if you are lucky to get him under control, you will have lots of fun. Did I ever tell you this game never makes you bored? It feels like zombie porn. Oh wait, scratch that. I mean, that's how a decent zombie simulator must look like. The maximum variety with minimum options possible. The cracks in the dam can't hold the pressure and it releases the Golden Mountain Dew shower on the city. Developers probably couldn't afford to splurge money on water modeling, so Stubbs just teleports back to the city. There I face consequences of our actions. Just look at that, that's a zombie apocalypse we are used to seeing in games. Nothing out of ordinary, right? But since you realize your actions led to that, it gives you shivers. It's not a goofy roller coaster anymore, it's a sad reality I have to fake fun in. On the TV, Stubbs sees Andrew Monday. Of course, despite millions of people dying by our teeth. He's very sorry that his property damage is going beyond any limit and he's insisting on enjoying the rest of Citizen's days. I'll make sure it will be rather short. The city now is protected by a regular army. I can't say it makes much difference, but I bet their brains taste better. Besides shooting automatic rifles, they can roll. Useless, but makes me exhale out of my nose. <laughs> So my main motivation to limp forward is not only to find Maggie, but also to stop Dr. Y, because of his evil plan to make an army of immortal soldiers like Stubbs. And because his brain is a delicacy and probably will increase Stubbs IQ. I have to go through a dead city listening to the music of screams, firings and jets flying above, ready to blow the city any second. On my way there are foot soldiers, mines, snipers who are difficult to get but fun to play, rocket launcher soldiers. Another one! 
and barriers I have to bring down by collective thinking. Stubbs dodges a bullet and makes it to Dr. Y's lab. The place is loaded with cutting-edge technologies like automatic doors, escalators and robots that can finally tell the difference between a human and a zombie. Since now they are programmed to attack me at sight, I finally make it to Y's office, where he holds a tedious presentation with how he extracted Stubbs' DNA and created the first immortal sample, a beautiful young girl who explodes. But the point is clear, this experiment will supposedly make them look like usual humans, but with insane regenerative abilities. Yeah, his way sounds inhumane anyway. A whole different story is turning them into zombies through decapitation, like I do. Dr. Y is flying around in his protective shield. I can't catch him, the only thing I can is to hide and throw guts into his face. Since abilities don't recover by themselves, I have to replenish them by eating the brains of infinitely spawning specimens. His shield can be deactivated by buttons I have to press, and oh boy, is it boring as hell. Mostly it's just idling and waiting for another supper until my abilities are recovered and I can damage the scientist. When he ran out of fuel in his jetpack, he lands and uses the last possible weapon, the words. He distracts me with threats while charging his laser. Stops, who doesn't give a damn about the trash talk, is patiently rotting inside. Pumpbot, whose existence is revolving around refueling, gets between them and when Dr. Y's laser is ready to release the impulse, it blows the pumpbot up. Stops can easily stand the explosion, unlike the scientist. Almost all bad guys are turned to dust. Maggie is waiting for her stinky hero she didn't know she needed. More than flowers and candies, she likes man with flowers and candies. Since it's a zombie apocalypse, a zombie will see you too. Stubbs gets a hand and goes for a search. There is only one tiny obstacle in my way. A military tank. Any idea how I can stop it as a zombie? Neither did I. But every tank has a driver who can be poisoned. So next I throw everything throwable and stinky enough to smoke a driver out. Now I can drive a goddamn tank. Look at that. Small tip. Driving a tank will buy you anything for free. I pick up my well-earned gifts and drive to the city hall where Maggie is. The place is guarded by the barbershop quartet. My, my, my feet have failed me! They're thick and well aimed for sure. In a nutshell, only a decent strategy of taking them out one by one can help you out. Andrew's office is guarded by Sonny Skagnus, a leader of the mercenary quartet. Once I kill you, Maggie's heart will be mine. Let's end this. Just you and me. And me. And me. And me. Okay, okay, I give up. He wants Maggie's heart too, but there can be only one winner, and he's stinky. Uh and green. At the entrance to Andrew's office, there is the guidebot who is still alive and blames Stubbs for the chaos he brought and the amount of irritating phone calls she has to answer. She also warns that in a few minutes there will be an atomic bombardment. Got it? I have to make zombie love fast. Andrew is aiming his laser gun at Stubbs when Maggie stands between them and tells her son to stop because this green man is Andrew's father. Many years ago in 1933, Stubbs was a door-to-door -door salesman. He found pleasant Oris's farm and even more pleasant young Maggie. She couldn't resist his charms, but when father came back home, he made it clear, on their farm only family intercourse is allowed and shot Stubbs dead. Nine months later, Andrew Monday was born, but Maggie still remembers Stubbs and still loves him. a zombie after all, he does zombie stuff. After he took power, wealth, property, mom and scientists from Andrew, he has got devastated. He hides behind the barrier and tries his best to retaliate for f***ing his mom. I have to damage the barrier by any means possible and then Andrew himself. Well, his mother is flying around the room by explosions. <laughs> I mustn't laugh at that. Anyway, there are waves and waves of barbers between me laughing, so my only way to succeed is to hide behind that arc and take everybody out. Fortunately, there are infinitely spawning people in the back rooms, sort of zombie feeders, which restore my skills because there is no way I can break through the barrier with my bare fists. Andrew's lasers will erase me out of existence in a second. That's why my army of zombies, who I don't care about, will do the job. When Andrew is deadly injured, Stubbs wants to finish him off, but resurrected Maggie Stubbs him, because it will be domestic violence if it's not good. Together holding their hands, they leave Andrew alone and run to the boat. Andrew is trying to escape, but it's too late. The atom bomb is 
still ready on the way to start Fallout. Andrew was blown to pieces and Punchbowl is destroyed. Maggie and Stubbs kiss each other and rot happily ever after, eating brains somewhere else. Happy end. Sorry for being radio silent for so long. I've been busy with work and we started to make scented candles as a side hustle with my wife. So all that consumed much time. I feel like I need to tell a few things about the game. The game is terribly amazing and fun. Damn, I even want to complete it again later with my wife. Sadly, we will never see the sequel. Even though it was planned, the game had poor sales and pretty low attention. And I believe there is one crucial reason why not many people took this game seriously. Even fewer consider it buying. It's because of its overall goofiness. When you see something like that, you don't really know what to expect. And I'll be honest, the game is trying to be funny and lighthearted, but it's constantly keeping its balance on thin ice. Apart from fun, there were scenes which made me sick at times. In wrapping up, although I'm happy we have a unique game like that, sometimes something dead should stay dead. Because this game is already almost ideal in its genre. It's highly unlikely anybody would be able to repeat the same experience even if it were the same developers. You don't want to see how they wipe the floor with something you love. Take post serious as an example. So if you didn't play Stubbs the Zombie, consider giving it a try. Thanks for watching and don't smoke or you will turn into this green gentleman. Unless of course it's that what you desire. Bye!